This is a guitar tutorial on the song Jenny Ram by Paul McCartney, a marvelous one. As usual, Paul's style is very articulated, so I will provide you with both a very close rendition of what he plays, technically speaking, and also a simplified versions of the arrangement for those of you who don't want to go in the, into the very nuances. I will also divide the lesson in sections so it will be easier for you to concentrate on each different part and being able to reproduce a very enjoyable cover of a song. Before we start I recommend that you hit the like and subscribe button and that you seriously consider to support this channel, support my work on the Beatles. For me to be able to provide you with more of this accurate tutorial that believe me need a lot of time to be studied this way and created. So let's go. Let me give you two very quick but important technical notes. The guitar that Paul used for the recording of Jenny Ram was his 1964 Epiphone Texan. Here you see a recent uh, Asian copy made by Epiphone. And remember we are tuned down one full step. So what we are playing in A minor is actually a G minor. So the song is easier to sing. Let's start analyzing the finger picking pattern that Paul uses. Paul uses different versions of the same finger picking styles in different songs. Now, what's happening here in Jenny Rand, like it happened in, for example, in uh, Mother Nature's Son, he strums the strings with the index finger, sort of reproducing one guitar that plays an accompaniment, and the other one playing a melody. It does the same thing in Jenny Ran. In fact, if, for example, if you we concentrate on this A here, there is this movement made by alternating the A string and the low E string, and then the fingertip of the index finger is playing two things: this and this one. Listen. So this is not fully played, like a... It's like this. And this will repeat throughout the song, every time it will stay on a chord, uh, more than one or two measures. The introduction of the song shares exactly the same chords of the first part of a verse, and goes like this. The first chord is a C, a standard C, played like this. And uh, uh, we play this by pinching the 1st and the 5th string, very simple, like this. You can also hear this same ringing on the, of the high string on the record. Then we move to a G chord, uh, which is played by moving the ring finger at E3 here, and then we add the pinky finger at B3, so and we move plucking the strings second and the last one, the sixth one here, so like this. Then we add the movement, the downward movement of the finger picking pattern and it goes like this. We mainly touch the second string. Remember it's a very light touch. Then we go here, we remove the pinky from B3 and play B1 and apply the same movement of the finger. So, like this. Then we move to a A minor chord, standard A minor chord, like this. And hammer on the B3 with the pinky. With the thumb on the lows, we alternate the A string to the low E string. Then comes one of the most um, difficult passages of a song, the passage from the E minor to the F. So I will explain to you how Paul plays this and, and then uh, we'll, I will give you a uh, simplified version. Now we are here and uh, we are going to play this. Okay, very slow, you, we are going to hammer on again the pinky on B3, then we rise the pinky, we move the ring finger at E3 again like before and we pull off B1 to open B. 
by muting the passage, okay? We mute again and we go to the F and the passage to the F happens by placing our medium finger on the second fret of the G string, so G2, and then adding the thumb at F1 on the low E string, so... Again slow. If you want to simplify this, you simply strum the chords this way. Okay, so A minor, then you go to a, a E3 on the lower E string with the ring finger, and then the F. Like this. Once we are here, we put down all fingers to form a no bar F chord by strumming only the last four strings from the D third to the last a low E. We play the finger pick in this way. When we pause, we pinch third and last string. We move to a G7 by plucking open second string and E3 pinching these two notes and then we move back to the E minor by hammering on the uh, B1. Then the song starts over so Paul sings like so many girls. This way start it comes to the part that goes this part here and goes on from the A minor it goes to so A minor you move to A2 pinky on B3 you slide everything up one fret by playing only these two notes okay and you start the strumming with the uh, root fifth uh, arpeggio here. Don't worry if you are hitting the D string because it, it makes a nice uh, color and it's also on the recording. From here starts the next section of the song. The next section of the song is the one that goes So, B starts at uh, index A6 and pinky B8. And when you finger pick, you strum only the G string and the D string, which is muted by the index finger tip. Okay. Then you move down A3, B4, and you strum the same way. Then there are a series of three chords. Relax, I will make this one very easy. Okay, just follow me. The first chord, you place your ring finger at D3 and you bar the first three strings with your index finger at the first fret. The second chord, you move your medium finger at the D2 and you add your pinky at uh, E3. The index finger remains exactly in the same position. So from here to here. And then the third chord, you are going to bar the first four strings with the index finger at the first fret and you add your pinky at E4. So, again from the beginning. Like this. And you are going to pinch the first and the fourth string, the high E and the D, by slightly touching the B string, the second string. And placing an ascent, okay, so you come from here. And when you get here, you pinch hard. When you go to a standard G7, and I'm going to show you exactly how Paul plays this in the recording and, and a simplified version, okay? So you choose which one you want to play. The original version is this one. So, when I mainly pluck this, I'm mainly plucking the mid strings, okay? I'm not plucking the string that is singing. 
so this creates a melody and an accompaniment at the same time the famous two guitars playing excuse me this way if you want to simplify this you simply strum it this way okay and then you go back with your index finger a3 and the pinky b4 and you move every ring one full step up and then you move to the original uh, index finger a6 pinky b8 so this way now the part is going to repeat so from here paul moves his index finger up one fret so half of a step actually passing from minor to major and repeat is the whole thing of the course that i showed you before goes to the g7 and back here which is the end of the each intro and verse part then after this part another verse starts and at the end of this verse there is a sort of bridge that i'm going to show you now it goes like this like this so you start with index finger a3 pinky b4 and you strum the usual way this time you are muting with the tip of the index finger the d string okay then you move down to a1 b3 and you plug in a different way this way paul does this okay so he pinches second and fifth together and then third and fifth together Again from the beginning. Then you move to A minor. You don't apply the um, A and E alternation here. You just strum on the uh, A. And then you move to a F and a C. To get rid of this, you just concentrate on the singing note. This note is going to give you the lead of the whole thing. Listen. comes on its own. I've always found amazing how these two chords, the sadness of these two chords, in contrast with the A minor, make the A minor sounds like a major chord, listen. It's weird. If you want to simplify this, you simply strum this, this way. simply after this session those parts repeat and then there is an outro the outro is played like this so we are here on the C same usual finger picking pattern including alternating the lows and we move to a G sharp which we strum like this I'm pinching the third and the sixth string then I'm plucking the B4 here and then I strum on the lows as I strum on the lows I'm already sliding down from B4 to B1 on the F, which is an F. Then I come back on the G4 and I hit the, as Paul does, I open E string. Slide down the F, back to the G sharp, again 
touching the high string back on the F. And then I close on a C, like this. So again. We are at the end of the lesson. You have both a close rendition of what Paul played and a simplified version. I hope you enjoyed the way I am explaining to you the very details of uh, the Beatles' performances, which to me is very important for us not only to produce very enjoyable covers of the song, but also to improve our way to produce our own music. So wait for the next video, remember to subscribe, remember to comment below, let me know if you enjoyed this work and uh, remember also to support the channel. So stay tuned. Ciao!